They say that 20 years is a long time in sport, but in the world of mountain biking, it's an absolute lifetime ago. It's apt then that I've been riding for nearly 20 years, and in that time, bikes have certainly changed an awful lot. And what better way to show off two decades of evolution than the two bikes that we have here? Both are Rocky Mountain elements. Both are full suspension. They're even the same 70 model. But it doesn't take a genius to see that they are very, very different. So without any further ado, let's take a step back in time, see how they compare on paper, check out what stuck and what sucked, before we try them out on the trail to see how they match up. The year is 2005. The first ever YouTube video has been uploaded, The Apprentice premieres on UK televisions, George W. Bush is in the White House, and the Airbus A380 has taken its first flight. It's also the year my dad purchased his first, and so far only, full suspension bike, this Rocky Mountain Element 70 which he still rides to this very day. It's very much a product of its time, with an aluminium frame, 26 inch wheels, and geometry that is best described as old school. Interestingly, the frame tubes were actually made by Easton, but unlike their famous square rad tubing of the time, this element is made from its 7005 ultralight tape wall aluminium with plain round tubing very little in the way of fancy hydroforming and tube shaping here. A very neat little detail is the fact it was handmade in Canada and signed by one of the welders that welded the front end. It's all a far cry from the latest Element C70 and its smooth wall carbon frame. While Rocky Mountain does still produce an aluminium element, this carbon C70 version uses some pretty fancy tube shapes and different carbon layups depending on the frame size in order to give the optimal stiffness strength for the given frame size. Of course, the other obvious difference between them is the wheels. While the old bike rolls on the once ubiquitous 26 inch wheels and 2.1 inch tires, the new element bowls along on 29 inch hoops with much wider 2.4 inch tires, which it could be argued are the now standard size, especially on shorter travel bikes like these. Speaking of travel, like many other bikes that have evolved over a similar period, such as the Trek Top Fuel and Specialized Stump Jumper, the Element has seen a bump in suspension travel as well. Back in 2005, it sported a modest 100mm of travel at both ends, which was pretty common for cross-country and short travel bikes at the time. The current Element, on the other hand, has seen a 20mm bump out back, teamed with an extra 30 millimeters of bounce up front for 120 and 130 millimeters of travel respectively. The suspension layout is similar too. Although the pivot has moved from the seat state to the chain state, the shock is still driven by a small linkage. But it's not just the wheels and travel numbers that have got bigger. Side by side, it's easy to see the modern bike is substantially bigger, despite being the same medium size and clearly shows the evolution of the much lauded longer, lower and slacker trend. The most obvious of that trifecta is how long the 2023 Element is. While the new Element is clearly a lot longer than its grandparents with a wheelbase of 1,202mm compared to the minuscule 1,056mm of the older bike, most of that comes from the front end. The chainstays are actually only 8mm longer than the 26 inch wheel bike, which when you consider the much bigger 29 inch wheel and chunkier 2.4 inch tyre is an incredibly impressive achievement. That means the remaining 136mm or over 5 inches comes from the front end of the bike. Part of that is down to the much slacker head angle. The latest element uses Rocky Mountain's Ride Forward geometry adjustment and in the slackest setting has a 65 degree head angle. The old bike, on the other hand, was fixed at 71.5 degrees, so the new bike is a massive 6.5 degrees slacker, so the steering is going to feel a little bit different. Frame reach measurements weren't really a thing back in 2005, but by our rough calculations, the 2005 bike has a reach of around 400mm, compared to the comparatively gargantuan 450mm reach of the latest bike. Despite the near 3 degrees steeper seat angle of the new bike at 76 degrees against 73.5 degrees of the old bike, 
The top tube length of the current bike is 25mm longer at 605mm. However, that laid-back seat boast and the frankly terrifying 100mm stem means the 2005 Element seating position is actually a smidge longer. Teamed to that absolute tiller of a stem is a horrifically narrow 610mm wide handlebar, so handling is going to be interesting compared to the new bike with its much more modern 50mm stem and 780mm wide bar. The bar and stem themselves are also a super old school 25.4mm clamp size compared to the 35mm setup that's now commonplace in 2023. How do you think the geometry will affect the ride of both bikes? Be sure to let me know in the comments. So as we can see, while there are some blindingly obvious differences between the bikes in terms of geometry and suspension travel, there is a clear family resemblance between them. Despite the near 20 year gap, surprisingly the parts fitted are not that dissimilar. Well, in terms of brand and level anyway. The 2005 Element originally came with a full complement of Fox suspension, just like the 2023 bike, with an RP3 rear shock and an F100 Terralogic fork. The RP3 is an ancestor of the float DPS that features on the latest Element, and back in the day, the F series of forks were seen on everything from cross country bikes through to longer travel trail bikes in its longest travel 150mm form, just like the modern Fox 34. Sadly, the old F100 succumbed to a worn out steerer tube a number of years ago, so a RockShox SID sits in its place on the old bike instead. Even now, the SID is still a popular fork. I have one on my Transition Spur for example and it's a perfect match. So there's a link from 2005 to bikes used in the present day, even in a slightly modified state. The same can be said about the Shimano XT drivetrain. While the derailleur on my dad's bike has been swapped out for XTR and the XT dual control levers have been replaced with LX models, the original featured a full XT group set, just like the current element. For those who have never come across them, dual control was Shimano's first attempt to integrate the brake levers and gear shifters into one unit. Imagine a road bike STI lever turned on its side and you get the idea. Safe to say they're not the most intuitive to use. The rear derailleur is also different, coming nearly a decade before clutches became commonplace, and the spring actually works in a different way. It works opposite to any other derailleur. Shimano called this rapid rise, and it was sometimes referred to as low normal. Without any cable tension, the derailleur would default to the biggest sprocket on the cassette, rather than the smallest like on any other derailleur. Thankfully though, dual control and rapid rise rear derailleurs never caught on, and we now have the easy to use 1x drivetrain systems rather than the 3x9 systems of old. While the drivetrain itself is substantially different between the generations of XT, the basic design of the XT brake calipers on the other hand is actually very similar, and they actually feel pretty good at the lever, a testament to how well Shimano designed them back in the day. With all that waffling and comparisoning out of the way, I'm intrigued and honestly a little scared to see how the bikes compare on the trail. We've devised a short test route with a smooth climb, some rollers, some rocks, some drops and some rougher sections as well to see how they stack up on the trail. We are going to get the stopwatch out, but we're going to take the times with a pinch of salt. We're not using a power meter, so this isn't the most scientific of tests. So with all that out of the way, let's give it a go, starting with the newer 2023 element. Right, so that's the run on the 2023 Element sorted. As to be expected of a modern bike, it's really, really competent. It feels great on the rougher stuff, wonderful on the smoother stuff, and it really doesn't bob too much on the climbs either. It feels confident and secure in its descending characteristics, and overall, it's just a really, really fun bike to ride. So let's take a step back 20 years and see how its predecessor fares.
needless to say, that was a slightly different experience on the 2005 version of the Element. That head angle teamed with that stem and the handlebars mean it's a little bit on the twitchy side. Constantly felt like I was going to go over the handlebars. The suspension is all right. The wheels get caught up on lots of smaller bumps and roots. Felt like it was really sucking the life out of me on the climbs as well. So I'm not hopeful that it's putting a competitive time for the element, but we do have those times. So I'm going to change my undercrackers and then we'll check them out. I think he should have probably done the testing bit. So down to the all important times and no surprises at all, the 2023 element set the pace, posting a time of five minutes and 56 seconds compared to the 2005 bikes, seven minutes and nine seconds. Unsurprisingly, most of that time was made up on the descents. On the climbs, the times were quite similar. The old bike is actually quite efficient, especially when you flick the lockout on the shock. However, on the smaller bumps, it does tend to lose out a little bit just thanks to those smaller 26 inch wheels, whereas the bigger 29er hoops just tend to roll over and carry momentum better. As soon as you head back down though, the gap massively widens. The new bike is so much more capable than the older one. The geometry, the dropper post, the wider handlebar, it all adds up to a bike that is much more confidence inspiring to ride compared to this antiquated old thing, which was mildly terrifying to say the least, as the GoPro footage will testify to. So thankfully, I'm quite glad that we're not riding bikes like this anymore and modern geometry is here to stay. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to see more mountain bike tech, then check out this video. Oh dear Lord, oh, I'm gonna die.